Good afternoon. Can everybody hear me? Let me know. Looks like we had some issues there. I signed out and signed back in, but I think that it's good. Can you see the slide? It is a blue slide with a picture of the Empire State Building, actually. Okay, wonderful. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for coming. Sorry for the little late start here. My name is Melissa Armel, and I own a company called The Stock Swoosh, and today I'm going to talk about the strategy that I personally trade. I trade the U.S. stock market, and I trade stocks, and I also, I day trade, I day trade the stocks by taking positions in the stock, and I also use my strategy for options. So if this is something that you want to learn more about, maybe that's why you're here today, you can feel free to email me any questions afterwards, or you can write questions in the room tonight, and I can take a look at it. You can email me at melissa at thestockswish.com for more information, or feel free to give me a call at 929-3200-GAP. So why are you here? You might be here because you're thinking about trading the market, and, and you know this is one of these things where you can become a day trader and you don't actually have to live in New York, I do live in New York, but you don't have to live in New York and be a trader and work on Wall Street. We live in an electronic world now where all you need is a computer and internet connection and a live charting platform package where you can trade and everyone can see stocks moving in live time and you can be anywhere in the world. If you're here because you want to do this for a living and you really want to make a go of it, uh, a lot of people have different goals. Some people are doing this for part-time. I don't know. But why are you here is a good question to ask yourself. Are you trying to pick up tips about trading? You're already trading or you're thinking about trading and you want to compensate by finding a different job. Maybe you like the job that you have and you're just trying to earn some extra money. The nice thing about day trading is that you don't have to be anywhere but your house to do it. So you can do it two days a week, you can do it five days a week, you can do it one day a week, you can do it any days during the week that you have time. And so it works well with a lot of people's schedules. So think about your goals. I think this is very, very important. And one of the things also that we're gonna talk about tonight is, and we'll talk about this more a little bit later, is realism versus optimism to achieve your goals. I find that I people that I talk to some of them are realistic and some of them are so realistic that they've actually, actually have lost all the optimism that they would need in order to be able to trade successfully. In other words, they, they, they want to do it, they're willing to put forth the work, but they've kind of lost hope or, or any positive mental attitude that they really can do it. But that's the only way you're really going to make it. It, you have to have a combination of realism versus optimism to do it, to achieve your goals if you want to be a trader. So the realistic part of it is you've got to have a strategy, which we're going to talk about tonight, which is mine. That's the realistic part. You won't be successful. You won't make money unless you have a strategy. And the part of it, part of it that has to do with being optimistic is that you have to believe that you can do it. You have to believe that you can make $1,000 a day. You have to believe that you could do it for a living if that's what you want to do or a career. And so what I find is a lot of people have trouble balancing these two things. And we're going to talk about this actually in a trade that I did last week. I'm going to use it as an example to help, I think, some of you. But for, for what you're trying to do, you really got to chunk it out. So you're looking to chunk it out to take the amount of money that you want to make and you go after it in the market whatever days you trade, whether it's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. You may not necessarily make $1,000 exactly to the dollar every day. Some days you'll make a little more, some days you'll make a little less. That's how it works, okay? So it's all about making good choices. You have to have discipline in your trade selection, which I do. I usually only do one trade a day. The plan of action is my system, which I'm going to talk about tonight. I'm looking for usually one trade a day, one pick, one quality entry, even though some of the stocks I trade have set up multiple times, I usually do one, and I don't over trade. So for example, if I take a trade on the day and it doesn't work and I take a loss, then I usually stop. One loss isn't going to kill anyone in a week. What I find that people do where they make the mistakes is they keep trading and trying to chase the money if they start the morning off or their day off with a loss, and, and that never turns out right. <laughs> Excuse me. You have to really be 
very planned with what you're doing. And also no piggy targets, I call it. You are up a thousand bucks if that's your goal for the day and it starts to back up again so you get out, okay? So if your goal is $5,000 a week, you gotta keep that in mind, you are chunking it out. You might make $2,500 in one trade. And then if you take two more trades and your goal is up for the week, then maybe you stop. Maybe you stop for the week. So you keep the money that you make. Again, this is about making good choices. Now people always ask me, what amount per trade do you need to make to do this? I always use an example of an average between $700 and $1,000 a trade. So that's what I'm risking. It's an advanced amount. You don't have to risk that, okay? You, I'm saying if you want to be very, very conservative, that's what you need to risk. It really, how much you make is a function of what you risk with the share size and the dollar amount. The share size will vary. Some trades you'll take 3,000 shares, some trades you'll take 4,000 shares, but your risk has to be the same. So whatever your risk has to be, if you decide it's 500 bucks a trade, then that's what it is. Your entry, the difference between the entry and the stop, which I'm gonna talk about in a little bit here, has to do with the dollar amount that you're risking, which will determine the number of shares that you take, okay? And when we're gonna talk about options today too, that's a little bit different because you're taking contracts. So the contracts is, for example, 10 contracts in an option is 1,000 shares, equates to 1,000 shares, and it has a set fixed price for it if you take an option. Now, going back again to the idea of making a living doing it, you know, with the actual share size, what is your goal? Maybe your goal is 50 cents a day. Maybe it's 25 cents a day. Maybe it's a dollar a day. Whatever your goal happens to be, but you have to back it out. I'm usually looking for a buck in every trade, but if I'm up my goal on 50 cents in a move, then I'll get out. For example, 50 cents, a thousand shares, if you take 50, if you get a 50 cent move and you have a thousand shares of it, that's 500 bucks. Here, if you have a 50 cent move with 2,500 shares, it's 1250. So this share size, and when I go over the trades, I'll go over with you, the share size has to do with the difference between the entry and the, and the stop. We have a question here. Let's see, Candy has a question. The problem is that the upfront mentorship fee is way too high. Do you mean for my class, Candy? I didn't get to that yet, but you might have watched my videos online. Uh, Candy is asking about my class. I do teach a class, which I'm going to go over at the end. My class is called the Golden Gap class, and it is $5,000. If that's too high for you, then, then maybe it's something you work on, work on saving, you know, if you really want to do it. I've been teaching the class for four years. I'm gonna go over this, I'll, I'll bring it up at the end, but I, I, it's four years I've had the business in the last few days and I'm running a special for 20% off, but you have to sign up tonight. I, ran, I rolled that out for my room in the last few days, but it expires today, but it would only be four grand. But either way, four or five, that is the cost to learn my system. I mean, I have people that have done trials with me and they've made the money in the trial for the week for the cost of the class. And I have people that make the cost of the class back in, you know, a few trades after the class. I, I, I don't want people to train if they feel that they can't do it financially. And so if you really feel like $5,000 or $4,000 if you sign up tonight is too much, then, then it, the better thing for you to do is to just wait and save. I mean... Trading when you feel like you're in fear about risking money is not a good place to be. My system is absolutely worth it because it works and people make money with me. That's why I have a successful business. But if, if for you personally, Candy, it's too expensive, then I'd say then wait and save. You know, I just don't want people, I hate when people are in that place of fear. I do a lot of lecturing in the room and I don't want to get too off target here from the lecture, but I do a lot of lecturing in the room for people to try to help them with their mental attitude and i think that's one of the things people get you know in the room with me that that they wouldn't get if they traded on their own you know you do have to be in a proper place in your mind mentally about money if you if you have the money and you think even if you have the money but you think it's too much you may not be in the right mental state if you if you don't have it you don't have it but it's the idea that you have to know that this is what it is if you wanna learn it and if you wanna do it. 
you know, again, I, I, I want to get back to the webinar here, but, you know, it took me three years to learn my system and it cost way more than $5,000 in losses to the market till I learned it. And so if I, going back in time, I wish that I, I wish that I had someone like me to go to. But what I do, and I didn't, I didn't get to it yet, but if you researched me already, well, I trade gaps. And that is something that is very, very specific and many people do not know how to trade gaps. In fact, I even talk to people that swear up and down that, that they know how to do gaps and then, then I know that they don't. Because like, I listen to what they say and I see what they talk about in a chart and I know they don't know what they're talking about. I have a knack for really reading what a stock is going to do based on the gap. And one of the best examples of that actually is the market. I mean, the market is just continuing to make brand new all-time highs. And I saw it, I saw it two years ago, actually, in 2014, that the SPY would hit these numbers. It took a long time, but it was because I read gaps that I saw where the overall market was going to go. All right, anyways, we'll get back to that when we get to the end. Uh, but feel free to ask me other questions. I don't want to get too off track here. So anyways, getting back to this, as we're talking about money, money management, money management, use of stop losses, all of these things are very, very important for you to be successful. And as I was saying, it's about the quality, not the quantity. You've got to take more winning trades and losing trades. And if, if you can pay for a system that teaches you how to do that, then it's worth it. Even if it costs $5,000, you, you have to get to a point when you stop bleeding. And many, many people are trying to make it in the market and they're bleeding money. You've got to limit your losses. One of the ways I do that actually is I use stops. I use limit order stops. I'll put a stop in. I'll take 7,000 shares of something with a hard stop. And if it takes me out, it takes me out. At least I know my loss is fixed, okay? And as far as the options go, uh, you know, I've only had one that I've killed, but I was down half of it and I just killed it. I just killed it when I was down half of it. It wasn't right. So you limit your losses when you trade with stops, or you have good money management if you do the options, okay, which is an overnight position. But you are looking to chunk it out. And like I said, there's five days a week. Now, what are some of the trades? We're kind of talking about this earlier. Let's go over it. As I was saying to Candy, I do gaps. That's a strategy that I train. This was last week. I think it was the Friday. Uh, no, this wasn't Friday. This was Thursday, I think. Uh, this was HCNP. HCNP gap down. Now, what is a gap? It's when a stock closes here at one price and gaps down the next day. So the stock closed here at 1940, gap down here to what? 16 something. A gap is when a stock closes at one price the day before and opens at another price the next day. That's what a gap is. That's all it is. It could be a gap up. It could be a gap down. Okay. But the point is that it has a different open at 9.30 than the close at 4 o'clock. So this is 4 and this is 9.30. So this was a short. This actually went to the dream target here. So I shorted the stock. If you wanted to do this with me in the room, you would have shorted it. I did not hold this all the way down here. This went and broke 15, which again was a dream target for this. It went, okay? I like to trade early in the morning, quickly, quickly, quickly. I'm in and I'm out. So what happened with this? The stock open, rally, boom. You're in, get the drop. This is what I do every day. This is a one minute chart. So this chart here is a daily chart. This chart here is a one minute chart. So here's where it closed the night before and here's where it gapped down. And here's where I shorted it. And then you put the stop and then you get it. So whether you get out here or here, or you could have held it longer, like I said, which I didn't do, it had a really, really nice move. It had a move of 50 cents into the morning. The actual move, if you wanted to stay in it all day though, you could have made double that. You could have made a dollar buck move. The entry on this was here, just right a little teeny weeny bit under the $16 number, okay? If we go back here in the daily chart, I'm shorting this taily thing here. So I am actually, the stock is rallying and it's green on the day and I'm shorting it. This may seem very aggressive, but the fact is that I really know what I'm doing. And this is how you make the money. And this is how you make it quickly. Because if I'm in this and I'm grabbing it at a good price, because it's all about the price and the entry in here, then it doesn't matter where I get out. It doesn't matter if I hold it all day. It doesn't matter if I get out down here. Of course, if you're in it all day, you have to manage it. You don't want to let the trade get away from you. But I just like to trade the morning. So I'm a day trader. I'm in and out on the same day, and particularly I, I consider myself a gap trader, so I like the quick move. So in this case, in this trade, you could have made $2,000, okay? 
Share size, 4,000. Again, it's a difference between the entry and the stop. That's how you know what to take. Now let's look at another one here. This is GES, was a retailer. This stock had a gap. This is a daily chart. The stock closed here the night before. Price up here, the close is around 1530-ish and opened down here around 13 something on the live day. This was December 1st. I forget if this was at night or if it was in the morning. Stocks gap post-market and also pre-market. You can look at some right now if you want to, although I don't, I don't know if there was any, oh, there was pay tonight. Pay was earnings tonight. Anyways, then I look at the gap and I rate the gap with my system. So the strategy I do is called gaps. I mean, everybody does, has heard of gaps if you've traded. If you've never heard of a gap, I'm telling you it's the difference between the close and the open. What I do differently is I have a rating system that tells me whether to short this or go long it and that I can do it aggressively on the one minute chart, okay? Which is how you make the money. The quicker you're in and the quicker they're out, the less you're at risk, okay? I am very impatient. I hate to be in trades long. And also you're more uh, at the whim of the market, okay? If the longer you're in a trade, you're in a trade at 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, 1.30 in the afternoon, you know, stocks tend to go with the overall market. And right now the market's been very, very bullish, okay? So if you are looking to short, you want to get in and you want to get out. Anyways, this one had a big rally up here into the open. You could have shorted this here. Now, I did not do this aggressively. I didn't do it immediately here. I rated the gap. I watched the gap. I was watching it. I wanted to see it situate itself. I did a quick trade in here with a stop right here and got the drop. And that's it. So I actually shorted this right in here. This just several minutes. I'm in and out of the trade. And that's it. And so the entry was 40 by 65. 4,000 shares, again, it's 25 cents. So what is your risk? Your risk is the difference between the entry and the stop. So the entry is 40, stop is 65, okay? This is how you're sizing yourself. Again, you'll learn this in the class, but just follow me here. You could have made 1,200 bucks in this trade. Minutes, boom, boom, do, uh, you're out, okay? And I'm telling you people, that's all that you need. The least amount of time that you're in a trade, the less stressful it is, at least for me. And I can very, very easily predict in a short, short time frame where something's going to go right away. I can see where it's going to go right now, right away. In the next few minutes, in the next 30 minutes, in the next 10 minutes, I can see right away. I'm also very good at seeing in the long-term picture where it's going to be, but you don't always know the timing of that. So as a day trader, you're going to get the timing right that it's gonna go in the time that you've got. And you've only got, really, between 9.30 and 4, except for the fact that, for me, I feel like I've only got between 9.30 and 10. And one of the reasons is the rationale behind why I do gaps in the first place. Now, why do I do gaps in the first place? How did I even create my rating system, which we're gonna talk about in a little bit? Because gaps are not unique. It's the way that I play them that is unique. My rating system is unique, which is what you learn in the class. My system predicts what institutions are gonna do with the stock on the day in the gap. And that's how you get that flush, that quick move, that instantaneous sell off, or in the case of a long, you get something that rallies immediately, okay? I prefer to short all these trades in here were shorts. And if, you've, if you looked at my YouTube and things online, you'll see that too. I, I find that short moves just happen really fast. And, and like I said, I mean, I like to play quickly in and out of trades. It's not that you can't go long bullish gaps, of course you can, but I like to be in and out quickly and that means really I'm looking for the panic and the downside. Now getting back to what I was saying about the institutions, I'm looking to see that hedge funds, professional traders, banks, big position people that have big positions in these stocks, for example here this is the XBR, this is the XPR is this one here, closed to the night before up here at 13, open down here at around 11. I'm looking to predict that institutions will do what with this? What are they gonna do with it? Are they gonna buy it or are they gonna short it? I'm looking to figure all of that out before the open, before 9.30. That is my goal every day before I trade. And if I haven't figured it out, if the rating system tells me that I can't tell what it's gonna do, then I don't trade anything. 
But in this case here, this one was a short. So this was actually the same day as the GES. You could have done them both. Some people in the room, room did do two. I prefer to usually do one at a time on a day, but you could have done them both. So this one closed here, gap down. Then here's the open. Again, you have a, oops, here we go. You have this big move up in here. Then it drops and it breaks. And you might have thought this was gonna be a long. If you didn't have the rating system that I have, you might have bought it here over the high, or you might have bought this, this in here. Because it actually looked like it was making a scoop, okay? But it didn't follow through. It didn't have the follow through. Instead, what did it do? It rallied up, retested the resistance, and here's the entry to short it, and you put the stop, and you're in. This actually had a bigger move than the GES. The GES had a, had a short, quick move and then flipped. This had a nice follow through if you did this one. So how would you have known not to go long this? Because some gaps rally, okay? This did not, my rating system. And then you would know, because you can't short, you can't short every rally just like you can't buy every uh, every pull into support. You ha this looks like, you know, a one minute chart that you could have read in many, many different ways. If we have time, I'll pull it up because it's hard to say now because you kind of know, you know what's happened here, I showed you. But if you were just looking at this here, if I just got rid of this stuff and just showed you this and then just showed you this, you might not know what to do. But this people, this is the thing that tells me. And so the one minute chart is what I play, but the daily chart is where my strategy takes hold of the rating system that I use that tells me what to do with it. This looks like I'm shorting it in midair, or if I bought it, it would look like the same thing I was buying it into, into, the, in, into whatever. But the point is that you gotta know what you're doing with it based on the daily, okay? The one minute, you're playing it to get the good price entry to put the stop to take it before it breaks if you're shorting it or rallies if you're going long but the idea is none of this is something that you would know how to read unless you could get this predictable in a way that makes sense because this is really what you're playing and if you only had one chart to trade or if i only had one chart to pick i use all my charts i have up the one minute the two minute the five minute the 15 the daily Sometimes I look at the 60 minute chart, but it's the daily chart. If I had one chart to trade, if everybody took away all my charts and said, we're getting rid of them, Melissa, you have nothing but this one today, I could trade on the daily chart. Take my entries, put the stops, figure out my targets, do it all. But this helps as a day trader to take the size and be very nimble with it. Anyways, this had an amazing move. 20 by 35 is the entry on this. I'll go back and look at it again. You could have taken 6,000 shares of this, risking again an advanced risk of 1,000 bucks, which you don't have to do. It, actually, this was $900. It was only 15 cents, but you could risk 500 bucks. And then you would have made what? Roughly around $1,300. But do you see here how this is almost your goal for the week in one trade? So you don't need to be trading all day long. You don't need to do more than one thing a day, which I don't. This entry is here. Stop here. Boom. Okay, so the idea of making money in the market consistently is possible. It's just getting back to what I was saying. It's the it's the realism versus the optimism. I find that I, I I'm 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 actually overly optimistic usually when I'm doing trades uh, for what I think I can get from them, and I'm tempering that. I'm tempering that as, with teaching people and mentoring people and running the room and also trading now for eight years. But I will say that most people are the opposite of me, which is probably one of the reasons I'm a good, I'm a good teacher for people. Most people are almost too realistic to the point where they're kind of negative about it and don't believe it can happen. You know, I'm just, I'm just like you. If I take a loss in the market, which I have days I lose, I still gotta get up and I gotta take the trade the next day. If I don't do it, how am I ever gonna make money again? You gotta be able to get back on the wagon. And it's the same thing if you took a class and you didn't learn anything from it, you felt like you wasted money, what are you going to do? You're either going to teach yourself what to do or you're going to pay for my class or somebody else's. you got to get back on the horse. If you're not willing to get back on the horse, then how are you ever going to move forward? And, and it's, again, 
it's about balancing out what you want to achieve with some level of realism, but being optimistic about it that you can achieve it. Balance is required. And this is, you know, obviously we're all striving for this in life. It's not just in trading with our health and our finances and our emotions and our, our downtime and our work time. I mean, one of the reasons that I love trading is that I do not work, you know, eight, 10 hours a day. You know, I'm doing the webinar tonight. I trade in the morning. I'm working on different projects for myself, but if I want to take a day off, I do. If I want to watch a movie in the middle of the afternoon, I can do it. It's a nice lifestyle to trade. If I want to take a three-day weekend, I can do it. I don't have to trade, you know, five days a week. It's I was overworked with my mortgage job, which is what I did previously, and I, I found that it was I was getting to me at that point in my life. And so I think one of the nice things about trading and doing this for a career is that you can have a more balanced lifestyle with your work hours. You do have to have the right mindset and strategy to do it, but it's achievable. It's just something you're gonna have to work at and learn or learn from someone like me. But anyways, like I was saying, it's, it's about learning the right skills and having the right knowledge. You know, a lot of people just don't realize how important the right skill set is. And it's not just about reading moving averages or reading support, okay? Gaps of the strategy, then I have the rating system, which I'm going to talk about. And then you also have to have the optimistic attitude that I'm discussing. Okay. Any questions as we're going along here? You started a little bit late, but I think we're, we're catching up here now. So my class itself is really a business plan for people. The only thing you need to determine after you take the class yourself is really how much money do you want to risk per trade. If you want to make $1,000 a day, I'm telling you how much. If you want to make less than that, 500 bucks a day, just divide it in half. You know, and many people can live on that. It's 2,500 bucks a week. So my class, though, tells you what stock each day to trade, how to do it, and what the exits are and the targets. The only thing that you really have to decide is how much money you want to risk. Okay, but it is like a business plan, which is very important to be successful. If you had your own business or were starting a brand new business, you would write a business plan for yourself. If you went to the bank and said, I would like to borrow $20,000 to start a, open up a store or something, they would require you to write a business plan, okay? So anyways, you gotta have a system. The system is the business plan, and the nice thing about it is it tells you what to do. One of the things it tells you what to do is the time of the day. In the class, I teach you all the times of the days the stocks you know, set up. And you don't have to devote a lot of time to it. Again, if I'm not in a trade by 10 o'clock in the morning, I'm not doing anything that day. Something's not right. If, if, if you were, you know, uh, Bank of America and you owned EXPR and you were along the stock, you would not have any reason to wait until 11.15 to dump your stock in the day and sell it if the earnings came out and you didn't like what they said. You would dump the stock if that's what you were going to do if you were Bank of America or, you know, if that's what you wanted to do, if you own XYZ amounts of shares, you would dump it right into the open. You would not wait until 11.15. So I have that time. It doesn't have to happen right away, but it's got to happen right into what I call the open, which is between 9.30 and 10 in the morning. And that's when people get in and out of positions. Big, 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 big players, okay? Any questions from anybody so far? How are we doing? Are we okay? Okay, good. So as I was saying, I do gaps. And really gaps give me an edge because not a lot of people know how to do them. And another reason that they give me an edge is because they have big moves. So they have uh, really big moves and you've seen some of these in the trade examples I went over tonight. And to me, what is that? It means you look at the daily chart and you look at the average move of the stock on the day, the average daily move, and you say, well, how much can this go? This much or this much, a dollar, two bucks? Well, you're gonna look for a big bar on the day of the gap. You wanna see one of the big ones. You're not gonna look for a small, tiny one on the day of the gap. So on days, stocks gap, you are, you are expecting uh, to have a big move. And that, when I say big, I mean based on whatever stock you're trading. Obviously, if this is HCMP, if the stock moves a dollar, that's a big move. If it would be something like Google, well, it, you wouldn't be looking for a dollar for a big move. You'd be looking for a $20, $30 move, okay? 
Jane is asking a good question. What kind of money do you have to have in your account? Now let's go over this here. I'm going to write it down. There are two different kinds of accounts. Maybe I should do a webinar on this sometime too. There's a retail trading account for day trading. Oh, I don't know why that went up there, Kathy. Retail trading account for day trading where your requirement is $25,000 minimum to actively day trade. If you want to do options at a retail account, you do not have a $25,000 minimum. Some places have a $500 minimum or more. Some have a thousand. You have to call and check the broker. That's to do options, okay? Now, the next kind of account that there is is called proprietary day trading accounts. I'm writing this in the room so you can copy and paste it and Google it. And those have lower minimums. You do not need the 25,000. Most of them have a minimum of 2,500, okay? Similar for the options, whatever the minimum is there for the option two, it could be 500, it could be 1,000 at the prop accounts. So it varies depending on where you trade. You have to look into the broker. You would have to open up an account with a specific broker. You've got two choices, prop or retail. I've done both. In my trading career, I started out with a retail place and then I didn't know what I was doing. <coughs> Excuse me. And then I decided to move to a prop place because I wanted a lower balance. And then I also wanted more leverage. The benefit of a proprietary day trading account is really not just the fact that you only have to put up $2,500, but actually you get high leverage. So you will get four to one leverage at a retail place. And you will get 10 to one at a prop place or more depending on your balance. Okay, what does that mean? That means if you have $2,500 in, you would have $25,000 in uh, buying power to take a position, which is very, very substantial. So for many of these stocks here, and I don't typically trade crazy expensive stocks for the day trades, you know, if you're trading something that's 15 bucks a share and you have 25,000 in buying power and 2,500 in the account, you can take a good position in this. Now, the amount of money you're risking per your account, per trade, has to be tempered with that. In other words, you can't risk a thousand bucks if you have $2,500 in the account. Do you understand what I'm saying? I always say, think a good rule of thumb uh, for any money if you're doing this for something like that for the, re for the prop places would be 10%. So for example, I wouldn't risk more than 10% in a prop account. If you have 10 grand, I wouldn't risk more than a thousand. If you have 2,500, I wouldn't risk more than 250. Do you follow me? Let me know if you have any other questions on that, but that was a good question. So the amount of money that you have depends on if you do options or day trades. You can use my system for both, and then it also depends on the type of broker. So as I was saying, you know, I do gaps, and what does this mean? We talked about it earlier. When the market closes at four o'clock, like right now it's 5.06 and market's closed, stuff happens in stocks. It can be news, somebody could talk on CNBC, uh, Kramer could talk on his television show, someone could quit, someone, some type of trial thing on some of these pharmaceuticals could come out, a report, an earnings report, the, something with the market, the election, okay? A million things could happen, and a million things do, after the market closes and the stocks have post-market trading until eight o'clock at night. And then in the morning, you also have an open, which is very, very early, uh, right up until 9.30, where stocks can move as well. I do not trade that time of the day. I find it very risky, but during the time of the day, I will analyze the stocks that I wanna trade on the live day. I don't take a trade till after 9.30. But in that move in price, at night or in the morning, whenever it happens, you get gaps being created and they create a sense of urgency. The sense of urgency could be that you better hurry up and buy it, buy it, buy it, or you're gonna miss the rally. The sense of urgency could be to sell it, which is what I like to do, or in the case of trading, I short it, okay? And the moves happen fast, which is a positive thing, as I said, because I can be in and I can be out very, very quickly. You can see here how this move happened fast. 
Again, you could have been in this longer. You could have made a buck out of this, but if you didn't want to, fine. If you want to just get in and get out every day before 10 o'clock, this gave it to you and all the ones. So gaps really are a specialized strategy that's looking to tell you to predict where the stock's going to go. And how do I do it? I do it with my rating system. As a professional trader, if that's really what you want to be, you have to think like a professional, act like this is your full-time job, even if you're only doing it for 30 minutes a day. Act like you got to show up for work with a suit and tie and you're dressed up and you're going with a skirt and you are sitting there and you have to report to a boss and you got to be serious about what you're doing. Or even if act like you're taking people's money, you know, that you have to be that serious about it. And if you're taking people's money, you wouldn't want to lose their money. You'd have to you'd have to report to the people and say, I took HCNP today and this is the reason or I'm going to take this today. And here's this is the reason, Mr. Smith, because it rates 22 points or whatever. And that's the reason I'm doing it, Mr. Smith. I mean, you have to be accountable to yourself, which, which, which is easy for me, but I'm telling you some people struggle with that. You have to be accountable to yourself for the trades and the choices and the decisions that you're taking before you do them, when you trade. I mean, this is, again, this is common sense, but I find that it's necessary to go over for people because, they, because often it's people make mistakes with these things about trading. So what is it about gaps that makes them so profitable? Again, the quick, quick moves. The quick moves, the fast moves that happen easily into the morning, the momentum, the volatility, and with my system, they're predictable. Now, my system is a rating system. It's based on a 26 point rating system, but you don't have to have all the points every day of 26. It has a cushion of six points. You're looking for 20 or more. So when I get in the gap, I'm looking to short the stock if it gaps down and the gap rates 20 points or more per my system. If the stock gaps up, then I'm looking to go long it if it rates 20 points or more per my 26 point system. So I'm always looking to play the gap in the direction of the gap. Otherwise, I don't do it. And if it rates under 20 points, then 17, 18, 19 is a 50 50 chance of working or failing, but you're really not supposed to do it. If you follow the system strict to the letter, you got to get the 20. And obviously, if you have two or three gaps on the day, if they all rate over 20, you can do them, okay? If you have one that rates 23 and one that rates 20, you could do the one, or you should do the one that rates the highest of the ones, okay? So again, how are you going to decide what to do every day? You rate them. Every day for as long as I've been doing this now, it's been eight years, but I didn't really start creating my system till. Well, I started it in the first year, but it took like three years to figure out all the points. But ever since then, I've always, I've always filled out a worksheet and I've always traded, you know, accordingly. I've never skimped it, okay? I can look at something and I can look at it and say, oh, I like this, but I still will sit down. I will sit at my desk like I'm sitting here with you now and I will rate the gap. I go through the system. I don't skip it. I don't like to trade things on the fly. The purpose of the system is to help you evaluate which gap to trade each morning using a checklist, and I do it myself. This checklist tells you what to trade. It tells you what to trade and when, and it's extremely important to follow this kind of system. If you are all over the place when you get up in the morning, just scanning and trying to decide what to do and change your mind every day, chances are you're probably not successful. I also find that traders that overtrain have challenges being successful and making money too. And I know that many, many trading educational companies out there teach a lot of different, different types of methods to trade. I just don't. It's, this is all that I do. The, every trade that I take, this is it. Okay. Once you learn it, there's nothing else to learn from me, but this is all you need to make money. How you apply it, whether you do options or swing trades or the day trades is up to you. Okay. And again, you can go long or short, but I prefer it to short. And the trading room I have, uh, which after you take the class, you give me in the trading room, I close every day when we're done. Some days I'm open till 10, 30, 10, 45, 11 talking, but some days if I'm out of a trade by 10, 10, 15, we're done. I do not keep the room open all day. I used to be on and off when I started out at the beginning and checking out various trading rooms. I found them very difficult to follow, very difficult to figure anything out. They were calling trades all day. You couldn't tell if people were losing or making money. It was hard to copy their trades. And, and ultimately, when I was in those rooms till four o'clock, I was losing, okay? Because there's just too, too many trades, too long to be, too long to be trading and very, very hard to follow people. I think less is more in relationship to trading if you want to make more money. 
less number of trades, less time in a trade, less hours spent trading. You can spend time studying your trades and reviewing your trades and learning. That is where you should be spending your time and the learning the knowledge and getting it down and reviewing your charts and going back and reviewing your trades. But the actual amount of time that you are in trades and out of trades should be short as a day trader. And this is and, and the amount of time that you're actually in the market in these trades. This is how people get bit, okay? They get bit in the butt because they don't understand that it is very important. You are like a sniper when you go in to take trades as a day trader. There is a billions of people that are trying to get in there and get money. There's always somebody against you in a trade and they're trying to take your money. There's nothing that you're creating when you take trades. We're not manufacturing, I'm not making a pair of earrings, okay? Uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not, you know, making something. I'm not creating an item or a, a goods, uh, you know, or, or a service even. When I go in and I trade, I'm just taking someone's money. I mean, that is what it is, people. I'm going in and I'm saying, I'm smarter than this guy. I'm taking this guy's money. I'm sorry. Goodbye. So you, you really have to kind of look at it like that. It's You're like a sniper going in. The smartest person wins. And that's kind of what it is. And this is one of the reasons that I do gas, because when I do gas, I'm aligning myself with this very intelligent and rich, wealthy people who are trading in the market and investing, which is the people that are making the gaps, which is the institutions, the banks, and the funds, okay? Those are the ones that are controlling what's going on. So I'm aligning myself with those people as if I had billions and billions of dollars like them. And if you want to make a lot of money, that's what you have to do. You don't want to align yourself with all the little people out there that are scrimping and scraping, trying to to take five trades in a day to make a thousand dollars, okay? Learn what you can right now. If you can't risk the money to make a thousand bucks a day because you don't have a big account yet, then risk what you can to build it up. It'll, it'll happen once you learn how to do it. And not only that, you'll have the optimistic attitude then and you'll have the confidence to do it. But the, the system that I've created is very powerful because it's looking for that very specific move in the time of the day, the right pick, and, and like I said, I've started to do options. We're going to talk about one of, the, one of the options I did. So some gaps set up in a way that the power will carry through. Now, you can do options for days or weeks, or you can even do them as day trades if you want. I vary when I do these, okay? The day trades, I'm in and I'm out. The options, sometimes I'm in them, and sometimes I'm out in the next day. Sometimes I'm in them for a couple of days. Sometimes I've been in them for a couple of weeks, okay? But... You do not have to worry about buying power or day trading regulation requirements at a retail place for options. So you can call around. It's a great way to use my strategy. So this was a trade I did last week. I forget what day it was. I think it was Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday. I don't even remember. I think I did it Tuesday, get out Wednesday, or I did it Monday, get out Tuesday. I have to look at the chart. But anyways, this was a good solid trade. I had an amount of money that I took in the position. It was around three grand. Took it. My price in the trade, the cost for the position was 1.42. Got out, made money, thrilled. Why? Why was I thrilled? Because it was almost 100% return on the risk that I had in the trade. So I risked three grand. It ran up. I had an order out. It didn't fill me. I put it down. I got out with 26.50. So I took $3,000 and flipped it around into 2,650 bucks within, within a day. So I took it one day into the close, and the next day I got out. That's good people. I mean, it's excellent. So I could have risked $10,000 and I could have got out the next day and made almost 100%. Okay? This is something that I've really excelled at this year. And this on top of my day trading has been very good for me this year and will continue to be so into 2017 because I've really got this down. But I want to talk to you about something else. Well, here I'm going to show you what I did with this. I just, I just did it here. I got in and then the next day it gapped up and it ran up and I got out. Now, the option itself, the strike was 775. So I made a 100% return on my investment without it even getting anywhere near the strike price. It was all the way up here. So I took it in here at a really good price and I got out here. And I almost doubled my money and there's nothing wrong with that. Now, this is what I'm talking about, about realism versus optimism. But I will tell you the stock went. The expiration date was Friday. It was here. This is today. This is Google. If I'd held the trade to the last day, I would have made over 30 grand. 
in a trade that I risked three thousand dollars in. Now I did not do that, but this is what I'm talking about. So when I saw that, when I saw that there, I thought, holy crap! And we talked about it in the room. I was right. I was right about where it would go. I was right. I was even right with the timing, which is very hard, people. Okay. So that's why I got out. I got out because I had 100% flip around of the amount of money that I had risked in the trade back. And it made sense realistically to take it out. I saw what was happening this day, whatever the day was here, forget it was the six. And actually it came in here this day. You see it went, went a baby red and then it flipped the next day. But the bottom line is I was up. So I took it and I was up really quickly. But if I had held the trade to the last day, it, 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 you know, it, I would have made over $30,000. But I didn't. There's some of these I have done that I've made a really, really good money. I've never made thirty grand in one of them, though. But that day is coming. But to risk $3,000 and make $30,000, that's a whole account for some people. So don't think you can't do it. This is what I'm talking about, about balancing the realism versus the optimism. Now, why didn't I hold it? Why didn't I hold it? I knew the market was strong because the expiration date was Friday. The expiration date was Friday. I didn't do this one out for, for more than a week. I didn't even do it out for a week. I took it here. I took it here. It was one, two, three, four, five. I guess it was Monday I took it. Yeah, it was Monday I took it and got out Tuesday. But anyways, if I had taken it out longer, okay, then I would have I would have held it through, seeing what the market was doing. But but when you're when you're in something and you know you have a time value and it's up in however many days, you have to weigh that. You weigh the profit that you're in, that you've got up in the trade. It's never over to the fat lady sinks. But every time I look at one of these that I do, that I make money in, and I see some of these things, I made the right choice. I made the right choice because I had risk in the trade, which was the three grand. I was up real profit, almost 100% return on investment, and it was expiring that week. But to know that I was right on this, the accuracy that I had, and that I could have turned $3,000 into $30,000, this is what keeps me going. It's what keeps me going. It's what tells me myself that continues to motivate me to know that one of the days I'm going to risk $10,000 and make hundred grand, and I'll have the trade out for two weeks. I mean, there's just an unlimited amount of money from the market. I see it. I see it all the time. First of all, I see it in my own trades when I make money, in which I make a couple thousand dollars. And then some of the options I've done, I've made well over 10, risking three or four. But I've never made $30,000 in an option trade, but this is coming. And you could make this on a day trade too, but you'd have, to, you'd have to hold it longer, which I tend not to want to do past 10. But don't think that the money isn't real. Everyone that was in the room with me that did this trade, we all got out and then we all saw it go. And we all sat there dumbfounded. But we did do the right thing. You must balance out the realistic world of knowing what you're doing, understanding that the trade expires on Friday and the right thing to do is to get out before the last day, but, but knowing that you called it right, or I'm talking about me, is what keeps me going because, because it's the accuracy rate. Because if you had $30,000 to risk and you can turn that around and make 100% in one day and turn 30 into 30, you know, I mean, why, why would you hold it? You wouldn't. It's the idea of thinking like a very wealthy person. If you had $1 million and you took a trade on a Monday and on a Tuesday, you were up $1 million or a little bit under it, okay, you would get out, okay? So many people are too small-minded about how they think. And I'm telling you, you got to get out of it. It's real. First of all, my strategy works. People are making real money with me. I'm making real money with me. And whenever I see something like this, I'm, I, just, I just love it. It's what keeps me going. So it's the unlimited income potential. And that is what helps to create your dreams. The money, the money is a vehicle to get you where you want to go in your life. It's not something that you're sitting in a pile of money and going to sleep at night every night, but it gives you peace of mind that you can pay your bills and do stuff with your life. You don't have to work. Like I used to work all the hours that I used to do. Does anyone have any questions before we finish up here? Anyway, success or failure has everything to do with the quality of your system. And it has a lot to do with your attitude and you've got to get it right. So what do I teach in my class? I teach the 26 points. 
I teach when to take the trains. I teach the entries. I teach you how to make money. I do talk about having the right mindset in the class as well. I, I teach you the 26 points, which is all day on the first day of the class. And this gives you the confidence to take the trades on the one minute tri chart because you're getting that early confirmation that you're going to have the institutional move. Okay. And then you learn in the class precise entries with follow through and you're looking for the, the targets. And we go over how to find those in the class too. So you learn the entries, the plays, how to trade the open. You learn my strategy, the 26 points, you learn targets. And, and you learn how to get conviction in your trading. I think one of the benefits of being in the trading room with me is that when I say something right away is like this, people hear it in my voice and they and they just press the button and they take the trade. It makes it easier for people. You know, for me, no one's no one's behind me telling me what to do when there isn't even time when I'm calling it. When I'm saying 40 by 65 and I'm seeing it in live time and you just gotta be ready, you just gotta do it. But I don't think I'm hard to follow because I'm usually looking at one thing. Jeff said I'm great. Thanks very kindly. Oh, thanks, Jeff. Jeff, you've been following me forever. When are you going to do the class? Jeff's been following me since, woo. I said I had the business for four years. Jeff's been following me for at least two. Anyways, any, anyone can do this. Anyone can do this. It does cost you money, as Candy was saying. You know, you can put it on a credit card. You can split it up into a couple cards. What, whatever you need to do. I understand that everybody's a different situation. I will do what I can to help, but you, you know, my information is worth it and you're, you're paying me for the knowledge and also the experience to learn with me and then, and then be in the room with me and take the trades. You don't want to blow up an account and then, you know, cry poor house and then not know anything and then not have an account and have to rebuild your account again. Okay. It's about the idea of having personal freedom to do it. Oh, there's Jeff. He said he needs more money soon. Excellent. See there, Jeff's been saving. Anyways, here's the course description. It's a full two-day course on how to strategically find, pick, and play stocks with a professional bearish gaps. I always get this question. Retakes are free. The class is online. You can be anywhere in the world and take it. I'm doing a special class for Sunday and Monday. I'm doing this because it's the holiday, and I thought this would be a good time. Sometimes people have conflicts on a Saturday with the holiday with family and things. So I'm doing a Sunday and a Monday class. The Monday will also be live gap ratings, live trading, we can trade right away on the Monday. And then I'm doing Sunday and Monday. I usually do Saturdays and Sundays, but I thought this would help people who are busy with the holidays with some family stuff. Okay. And as I said earlier, I'm doing an anniversary special through tonight. Everyone that's already on my list knew about this. I've been marketing it since Friday. It's four years. Four years I've had the business. 2012, I started it in December the stock swish LLC and here I am so I'm giving 20% off you'd have to sign up tonight for that you can email me I'm here it's only 530 I'm in New York if you know you want to sign up if you're thinking about signing up you can email me and get a trial for the room this week and be in the room we'll have trades we'll have things to do Oracle's reporting this week Adobe's reporting this week if you want a trial email me there's also something special that I'm doing on Friday if you want to go to my YouTube site, it's the Stock Swish on YouTube and subscribe. On Friday, I'm doing a live YouTube where I am going to be on a big screen with my charts and you're going to see me and I'm going to call trades live on Friday morning at 9.15 right into the open. You can watch me on the YouTube live. You go and you go and subscribe to my YouTube. That's Friday, which would be December 16th. But you can be in the room the whole week if you want for a trial. Just email me at melissaatthestockswish.com. But that'll be really interesting. It's the first time I'm ever doing it. You're going to see me and see my charts on the big screen. And I'm going to call it live for anybody that wants to come and watch the YouTube live. That's going to kind of be exciting. Is there any questions from anyone about anything? I'll say one thing tonight before I let anybody go. And, and don't forget, you can email me here if you're interested in the class special or if you just have questions about the class, I do make myself available to talk to people. I am busy now. I've got a lot going on. I've got a crazy lot going on. But if you call me and leave a message, I will call you back. If you email me, I will email you back. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm doing my best to help people as much as I can. Like I said, though, it's really up to you to be in balance with yourself to make it happen. I'm not there for you to take the trains. And you have to decide if it's something that you're ready to do. 
I always think that the end of the year is a good time to get going. I always like to get a jump on things. Everybody has their New Year's resolutions in January and February till they get started on. I, I like to get a jump on things. Like I, to be honest with you, and you'll laugh at me, like in, in like two months ago in September, I think I said 2017 and something on an email or in a, in a webinar. Like my mind in September and October was ready into the calendar year of 2017. I was starting to think about my goals and what I wanted to do. You know, right now is a good time to get a jump on the calendar year for next year if you really want to become a trader and you want to learn something new like my system or if you want to make improvements to your own trading or change careers. Don't wait until January 15th or January 30th. You know, it's good to get a jump on the next calendar year and it, and it makes you feel good about yourself. One of the things I've learned from trading or in teaching, I should say, for four years since I've had the business is that I've met a lot of, a lot of people. It's been, a, it's been a great experience. I've met people from all walks of life that live everywhere in the world. They're Jeff said he's in Australia. I, I find that um, I've really learned a lot about human beings. I've learned a lot about people, men and women, and I've learned, I've learned mostly about men. Most of my clients are men. I do have some female traders and some women that I've taught, but most of them are men. There are mostly men that are trade the market. And, and, and the gamut of age ranges of people I've taught are all over the place, from, from 20 something to 80 something. I've never taught anyone that was a teenager, and I've never taught anyone over the age of 81, but it's a full wide range of people that I've met and talked to all, all over the world. For, for one woman running a business, I have clients that span the globe, and that is very unusual. Um, and, and it really says something about what I say when I talk to people, if you listen to me tonight or watch my other webinars, the things I say really do make a lot of sense. And if you trade on your own and listen to me and go back and listen to the things I've said or look at charts, you'll understand that too. If you didn't understand anything I said tonight and you go look at charts and watch some gaps this week or if you want to join the room, it's really based on common sense, the reason that I trade and it's really the reason that it works. Okay. Anyways, I'm here. It's very, very dark, even though it's only 5.30. <laughs> Daylight savings time. Have a good night. Have a wonderful evening. Happy anniversary to me. If you're interested, email me. I'll be around. Otherwise, I will see everybody at the next webinar in the training room. And don't forget about the YouTube Live. Go there. Subscribe to the YouTube. And you can see me Friday morning trading live. Thank you, Kathy. I've been with Online Trainer Central for that.